Well, g'day everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from the home studio today. I'm just by the computer here and I was working on a video shot on the Canon R5 in C-Log and I just wanted to take you through my process for converting the footage, the 10-bit 422 C-Log footage out of the EOS R5 to something usable in Premiere Pro. So let me take you through that process. Um, I'm just gonna fire up my QuickTime here on my screen to get my screen shared and we can get straight into this video. So basically what I have is a blank Premiere Pro project here that I've created. And I'm just gonna right click and import footage shot from the R5. So I'm just gonna find where that footage is. And as soon as I find that footage, that's the clip I wanna convert there. I'm gonna import that into Premiere. So basically this is a a clip that I shot in C-Log. It probably won't play back. Well, let's actually see how that works and how that goes. It's pretty quick to dump in like this and I can work on this in terms of audio. Um, but even if I put it say down to one eighth of a um, quality, I'm working on a 2019 MacBook Pro, the 15 inch, not the upgraded version to the 16 inch, but the architecture and everything on this Mac is really high end. So, So it played me about 10 seconds as you see, and then it started to lag and slow down. So that's a process of, I've got the footage on a RAID and it's not super fast off the RAID. If I was playing this off my hard drive, it might play smoother, but for a whole edit making cuts like this, um, then it wouldn't necessarily be worthwhile. Um, this actually footage is the um, 4K fine or 4K HQ. So it's high quality 4K. So let's have a look again, hit play. And yeah, I can hear everything firing up. The computer's firing up. You probably hear the fan, the hard drive's running hard and it's really not gonna play back for me. So what I do is I basically take this footage in the timeline here and I will right click on the footage and choose create proxy. So what I want to do is create a QuickTime proxy and I want to create a high resolution proxy. I could probably do low resolution for this. If it's not graphic critical or color critical, then I can do a low res proxy, but I've found that the high res proxy, they play back smoothly. And so I'll create that. So then I can color grade the proxy and everything. It's gonna be a QuickTime ProRes proxy. So I can color grade it and I can use that and it will play back fine for me. So I'm gonna select that one and I'm gonna put it next to the original media in a proxy folder. So it's gonna create that for me um, automatically. And so I'm gonna click, okay, that's it. That's all I need to do. Now what's gonna happen in the background is the media encoder is gonna fire up on its own. So I'll keep trying to scroll through and show you what happens with that. But basically you can see now Media Encoder has loaded and it's loading up the project for me. So let me see if I can go into Media Encoder. So it's not letting you in yet, it hasn't booted up yet fully. But it will boot up shortly. So here it is, Media Encoder has booted up and it's already beginning to process that clip. So it says, this is a long clip. This was a YouTube video clip that I shot just now, um, a video I've just released called Five Reasons to Shoot Canon Log on the EOS R5. And I talk about in that video that it's quite easy for me to do this process. So now I'm basically doing the encode. It's saying there's 27 minutes left to go on the encode of this uh, big file. And already I'm working in Premiere so I've already got my timeline in order. I can make cuts here and here where I know there's no footage, so I can cut it here. Um, I can, you know, cut this footage out. I can cut the front of this clip. And if you can hear that banging in the background, that's just my daughter playing out in the hallway. But basically I know that's all, you know, so I can start to work on this clip anyway. I can even turn off the visuals and I can listening to the audio for this. So that's another thing that allows me to work on this clip, listen into the audio and not worry that I can't play the footage yet. You know, in the meantime, this media encoder is going on here. It's now 
time elapse is more, saying 36 minutes, but I, that will probably get better as it goes along and as it you know, works on more of the clip. I can also do things like add adjustment layer. Um, so I can actually add an adjustment layer here and I can put this here and I can add my Lumetri uh, creative look. So for this, I'm gonna go for, sorry, my basic correction LUTs here. Probably gonna go for my base LUT, something like that. So I can start to get a feel for how the image is gonna look with my LUT applied. Um, let me go to my crush LUT, something like that. And usually I add a vignette as well. So I can add a vignette on there and just tweak that midpoint and boost the feather and just drop that roundness a bit. So I can start to get an overall correction on the footage while that's processing and just tweak the colors a bit here to what I want. That's pretty close, I think, to what I want. Um, some more uh, shadows, drop the shadows a bit more, a bit more mood to it, which, you know, my stuff is a little bit like that, it tends to be a little bit like that. So something like that is, you know, already a bit of a grade on the footage, add some sharpness to that as well. We sharpen up to like 40 or something. So back to media encoder and it's got, you know, 38 minutes to go on that. But basically I'll start to pull my grade here and, you know, get everything ready. So I can be working on this in the timeline. The other thing I can do is I can start to put in B-roll or sort through B-roll as well. Um, if I've got other B-roll from any other camera system or maybe I've got some B-roll that I shot on the R5 um, and that's all also loaded up in media encoder here to be processed. Well, I can also start to work on making cuts in and out points of that footage because if I go to a one over eighth, I can sort of scrub the footage. Uh, let me just turn off that adjustment layer. I can kind of scrub the footage and it will jump to, you know, the point where the footage is. So yes, I can't edit it. I can't edit it smoothly and easily, but I can sort of work on getting it set up and ready to go. So now this whole thing is kind of ready to go. I can say save and it'll save it. And basically I can leave that now and I'm ready to go. Let's say I wait for half an hour or I go do something else for half an hour to let this render out, and then I can come back and it's pretty much ready to go. The other thing I can do is I can add in all my titles and stuff that I'm gonna be using for the video. So in this case, it's one of my vlogs and I've got a bit of a look to these now that I put as like the five tip videos, five tips and tricks you might've seen video that I did. I put these screens between when I announce the next tip. So I've got that that I'll use for this video as well. So I can import that in so I can import that in and start to get all my things in order. So that's kind of how I do it. I've gone back to Premiere since using the EOS R5 because I feel like for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, my go-to is Resolve, but on the EOS R5, Premiere is really a great solution and it works. I like the proxy workflow for that. One of the other factors and keys here is if you have a lot of footage and you're not sure if the proxy is attached or not, what you can do is you can right click up here and you can, um, sorry, right click on here it is and metadata display, open metadata display. Come into metadata display, type in proxy and you can see here the proxy file path, the proxy media file name or the proxy. So it's proxy status. So I click on that and I say, okay, and it adds it right on the end here, it adds the proxy status. So I grab that now and I drag it all the way to the other end, if it lets me, okay, yep, it's there. So I just go like here, I drop it in. So now when I'm looking at that clip, I can see the proxy status of that clip and I can see it's currently offline. So when I come back to this and this is finished, I don't even need to worry about being in media encoder. I can see here that the proxies are online, which ones are online, which ones are still offline. So I'm, I've got a good visual reference of what's happening. If I open up this clip 
uh, if I open up this project again and the clips are offline, I can see that straight away. And so I can go and re, um, you know, re-enable those clips. Um, and I'll just show you where they are in the actual finder here. Uh, so in my vlog, here it is. And I'll go into that. And it is the five reasons to shoot Canon log. So there it is there. It's just in the main folder because I didn't even have that clip in a footage folder, which I normally would. And the proxies, it's just creating it right there. So that's how I do it. Hopefully you got something out of this video. And if you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up uh, at the bottom and subscribe. If you haven't already, um, I'll be doing more videos like this one, sort of around the Canon R5, which is the cam camera I'm mainly using now, but on other topics as well, like business, uh, being a video producer, and the things that helped me get to where I am in my business. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.